Warning. Censorship. Warning. Censorship. You're saying that you're that the public health orders override criminal code 176, that but that's why we can't let you in then because the code 176 makes it illegal for you to interrupt a worship service, mm -hmm. and our worship service has begun, mm -hmm. and we're stating that to you very clearly that your presence in this building will be interrupting our worship service. How so? Because your presence intimidates Again. our people. That's your perception. Like I said, it's not that uh, we're here to interrupt anything. And, uh, but you will don't, don't. And it's not an interpretation. It, you will be. It's a fact. You will be interrupting. Again. We are standing firm on the criminal code 176 that protects these rights. Yep. So at the end of the day, the public health act says we have access to go in the building. Okay. If you don't want us to go in the building, that's fine. But you're accepting the fact you're denying us access to the building. Okay? So if you deny access to the building, there's potential for criminal charges. Walk behind me, Sheila gunn -Reed for Rebel News here at Grace Life Church west of Edmonton, Alberta. Now this is the first Sunday since the pastor here, Pastor James Coates, was released from provincial custody after spending 35 full days in a maximum security facility for violating a public health order. Now Coates was first taken into custody February 16th for failing to comply with an undertaking that would require him to limit his congregation to 15% of fire code capacity. That order also would force the congregation to wear masks and require them to social distance. Now these measures are something that Coates and the congregation here say would violate their ability to practice their faith in the way that they see fit. Now it's the beginning of Holy Week, the most important week of the Christian calendar. The church here was at 619 people, which is 100% of fire code capacity as it has been pretty well consistently since Coates was first taken into custody. Now, Coates was released when a deal was struck between Coates's lawyers from the Justice Center for Constitutional Freedoms and the Crown that would see the public health charge dropped, a second public health charge proceeding to trial in May, and the criminal charge of failure to comply with that undertaking, now that's the one that landed Coates in jail in the first place, resolved with just a $100 fine and one day served in jail, which Coates had naturally already served. He actually served 34 extra ones. However, the justice who had to sign off on the deal, Justice Jeffrey B. Champion, increased the financial penalty to $1,500 because apparently 35 days in jail that Pastor Coates had already served. Well, I guess that, according to the judge, was not a deterrent enough. Now, today has been an exciting day. The media presence was quite heavy, which is strange given that media interest has waned in the past few weeks. But maybe the media knew something was going to happen today, and we'll get to that in a second. The mainstream media brought a total of six security guards with them and they all stood as they normally do in the ditch off of church property because unlike me, they are not allowed on. Now to be clear, this church has engaged in completely peaceful resistance to the public health orders to the point where their pastor was in prison for weeks. This congregation isn't violent. It isn't a threat to anybody. What we saw from the media was just public victimhood theater from a mainstream media that seems almost purposeful in its misunderstanding of Christianity. I mean, what are they truly afraid of? Bibles and bake sales? This congregation prays for its enemies and for those who incarcerated their pastor every single week. I know because I've been here. Now, just as service was starting, and just as Pastor Coates made his return to the pulpit to offer an opening prayer, two RCMP officers from the local detachment and an Alberta Health Services inspector came onto church property to demand that they be able to enter the church to inspect it. But that would have been a violation of Canadian law. You see, impeding a church service in this country is contrary to section 176.2 of the Canadian Criminal Code. And the law there uses the language willfully disturbs or disrupts. Now the church elders here, they were firm, but Christian in their kindness. They were not disrespectful or unkind to the cops or the AHS inspector, but they were not allowing anybody into their church services. This is the most important week in the Christian calendar, and yet bureaucrats were here to disrupt it. Take a look. Are you telling us that the public health orders override criminal code 176? I'm not here to debate that. Okay. I'm here to do a job under... Uh, Yellow but you house. entering the building would okay, determine again, that that is overridden? Now, see, we're getting into a debate. No, no, I'm asking and, a question. I'm, uh, I'm trying I'm not, to get I'm an not, answer. Again, I'm not here to debate those things. Those are things that okay. uh, can yeah. be debated in court. Okay. Uh, so, uh, and I'll let the lawyers and the judges make okay. that call. So okay. I guess, though, by so, you guys going inside, you would be saying 
that you're guilty of interrupting a worship no, service. No, I'm not saying that. No, but you're saying that you're that the public health orders override criminal no, code 176. That but that's why we can't let you in then, because the code 176 makes it illegal for you to interrupt a worship service. Mm -hmm. And our worship service has begun, mm -hmm. and we're stating that to you very clearly that your presence in this building will be interrupting mm -hmm. our worship service. How so? Because your presence intimidates again. our people. That's your perception. Well, no. no How so? No, and again, so. it's not about perception. Our people understand that you guys, and again, we respect the work that you do in the mm -hmm. community. We respect you as police officers, but in our worship service right now, people are praying, people are singing, people are listening to the word of God be preached, mm -hmm. and they can't do that with your presence in the building. And with all due respect, the law has now put our pastor in prison. And so for the RCMP to come into the service, it is absolutely a disruption. We have seen the arm of law enforcement come against us. So to come in our building is absolutely intimidation at this point. That's why we can't let you in. Uh, once again, I'm sorry you feel that way, but all, you have to understand that we also have a job to do. Yeah, right? yeah we do. Okay, we so do. under that authority, <coughs> That's why we're here. Okay. We're not here to go in, up and down the aisles. We're not here to. No. Yeah, you, the you actually will be. No, we when won't. you no, when you go inside, you will see that you will be. You'll be. Our people are sitting right there. Like, okay. Again, and our work. service has now. We we are officially started. Right now we have. Yeah, we've wasted time. Here. You, it we was started been, before that, but now he's in the pulpit. We were already praying and singing. Yeah, oh. he's in the pulpit. I haven't been in, so I don't know what, what it's like. But, yeah. Uh, like I said, it's not that uh, we're here to interrupt anything. And, uh, but you will don't, be. And don't. it's not an interpretation. It, you will be. It's a fact. You will be interrupting. Again. We are standing firm on the criminal code 176 that protects these rights. Yep. I'm sorry you feel that way. Again, that is not our intent. Okay. And if there's no intent, then... Well, I don't think intent okay. is what... It, intent, intent is what is, it comes down to. No. It does it, come down to that, yes. Well, no, because your moment you walk in the door, you're interrupting a worship right. service. And that's very clear in the criminal code. Yeah. What's also clear is intent. So there has to be a reason for somebody to do something. It's called mens rea. Okay? So if someone wants to cause property damage, they have to want to cause property damage for a reason. Yeah. If they do it by accident... So can I ask what your intent... Not, what is your intent then? Uh, like uh, the inspector has stated, uh, I'll let him say... Okay. Well, he's here. I don't want to speak for him. Okay. We're only here on his behalf. Yeah. Okay. We're not we here recognize under... that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Very good. So, what is the intent? Uh, I'm here today just to observe the service okay. and uh, just to observe the compliance with uh, with uh, the orders. Hey, what's your name, sir? My name is Dragon. Dragon. Okay. Yes. My name's Rob. Nice to meet you. Nice yeah. 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 And so again, no, no other intent. Yeah. No, but again, in that, with that intent, it will interrupt our worship service. Yes. We, we don't mm -hmm. have intent to interrupt your service like we would. We I, would I think there's nothing inside yeah. that you're going to see that you can't see clearly from out here with the amount of cars in the parking lot. So again, I would ask, why do you need to be in the building versus what you've seen with the amount of people that have come into our building from outside? I would need to observe uh, your compliance with 50 percent capacity. I think you can count, just by counting the cars, you can tell we're not compliant, and so uh, that's why I'm saying you can't come in. Compliance with masking and physical distancing. And again, I would say with witnessing people that are, you know, that have stand, stood outside and people over there, you can witness without coming into the building, that same thing. I, I, would, I would rather observe from your side uh, rather than just assume yeah. what's going on. So. Well, no, you're not assuming because you can see there's yeah. people not social distancing and you can see the cars. And so you can count the cars in the parking. There's no assumptions. There's no assumptions there. And with your own testimony and they're witnessing that, you don't need to come inside the building. Uh, another thing is under the Public Health Act, uh, we have the right to enter at any reasonable time, any place of business. Under the Health Act you do, but not under the Criminal Code 176. Under the Public Health Act. Yeah, which doesn't override. So I think based on what I've said, being reasonable, you can observe everything you need to outside the building and that way you don't interrupt our service and you still get your observations. And I think that's still factual because like I said, any amount, of, if there's more than 93 vehicles in this parking lot, the vehicles don't drive themselves. So therefore it's reasonable to assume that there's 93 people minimum. Again, again, we can't assume. So at the end of the day, the Public Health Act says we have access to go in the building. Okay. If you don't want us to go in the building, that's fine, but you're accepting the fact you're denying us access to the building. Okay? So if you deny access to the building, there's potential for criminal charges okay. or potential for additional charges. Yeah. So that being said, we're going to respect the fact that you guys don't want us to go to the church. We're not going to go into the church. Okay. We're going to stay outside and we'll observe the numbers as well. Okay, thank you. Okay? So there's no, 
then there's no further interaction. Yeah. Okay. Just Thank you. Are you satisfied with that? Very much so, yeah. If you can observe from outside. Now, even though the church elders were threatened with a criminal charge by the RCMP, they did not budge. And that makes sense. They've got a pretty great example of how to hold firm in their pastor, Pastor Coates. Now, I mentioned briefly that Pastor Coates did give the opening prayer to the service here today, but he did not do any preaching as understandably he spent the whole week catching up with his wife and his sons and he wasn't able to prepare a sermon. Associate Pastor Jake Spence gave the sermon today and once again it was so busy that people were tuning in on the live stream in their cars in the parking lot and there were tents set up outside so that people could listen over loudspeakers. Once again after church services wrapped up there were normal people doing normal things gathering together in Christian fellowship. There were conversations over coffee with no masks on. People were smiling, hugging, praying. There were kids playing outside, once again, ruining their little church clothes. This remains one of the most normal places in the entire province, maybe the entire country in these abnormal COVID times. If you want to feel what it was like before the coronavirus health regulations stole from us normal human interactions, might I suggest you visit Grace Life Church or one of the other churches advertising themselves as open at openalbertachurches.com. Dot com. For Rebel News here at Grace Life Church, on the very first Sunday since Pastor Coates' release from provincial custody, I'm Sheila Gunreed. If you've received a lockdown ticket, I don't want you to pay it. I want you to fight it. Send it to us at fightthefines.com. And if we think your case has merit, we'll put you in touch with a top criminal lawyer at no cost to you. Again, that website is fightthefines.com.